In this video, I want to begin looking at a full WordPress shopping cart called JigoShop. And now it shares a lot of similar roots with WooCommerce, and we're going to see similarities between the two. JigoShop is one of these plugins that has a lot of add-ons to it. So the basic plugin itself is free, and it will give you basic shopping cart functionality. However, there are a lot of extensions to it. Let's take a quick peek at these, just so you understand that the functionality isn't all in the plugin. There's a lot of add-ons here, and most of them are paid. Okay, so depending on what you need, it could start to add up to some extra money on top of the free plugin itself. You can see lots and lots of options, different payment gateways, for example, different functionality that you may or may not need for your particular setup. So just to be aware of exactly how it works. All right, so we have our Dish Belief site, and we're going to add JigoShop to it here. We go, of course, to Plugins and Add New. And very hard not to get this right because there's really nothing else spelt like that. There we go. So it's right off the top here. And you can see there are also some other plugins. Not all the plugins are paid, of course. There are lots of free plugins as well for JigoShop. So we'll install the main plugin here. And when it comes up and we activate it, you'll notice on your sidebar, we now have several sections added to the sidebar. Okay. Products and orders. These are custom post types that have been created for you by the plugin. And you'll also notice, this is important because people kind of get surprised and they go, wait a minute, where did all these pages come from? Look at this. Cart, checkout, thank you pages, my account shop, tracking your orders. These are all added automatically by the plugin, so don't freak out when you see them and say, where did these come from? All right, we have a dashboard for Jigo Shop. It's not integrated with the main WordPress dashboard, but looks very much like it. It'll show you current orders, list of all your products that you've got there that you can click straight through to, so it's like a bit of a menu as well. Reports, we'll get to that later. Coupons, again, that's a separate issue where you can create and manage your coupons there. System info, this is useful for telling the makers of JigoShop what your system has. So if they're trying to solve a problem for you, you can place this in their support form and it basically says what you've got on your system, what browser you're using, what other plugins you've got, that sort of thing. All right, we're going to settings here. And settings consists of a series of tabs up along the top here. We're just going to cover the main shop ones in this particular video. You get to choose your country and, more importantly, your region. So, for example, in the United States, it has all of the different states and so forth. For Canada, look at this, all the regions for Sweden. Suriname. I mean, there's lots and lots of detail here. I'm going to go to mine for Canada, and I choose my province here. And then I get to choose my currency. Again, lots and lots of choices here. I'm going to choose my Canadian dollar. They have a help thing here. You just mouse over these, and it gives you a bit of help. And the nice thing here is it actually is helpful. It's more than simply, for instance, in other programs you'll see, when you mouse over this, it might just say, these are the allowed countries. Well, of course, allowed countries is in the title, doesn't help me very much. This actually does explain a lot of what's going on. So, for example, if there's certain countries you aren't going to ship to, you can choose that by going here, and when you specify countries, it then allows you to enter those from here and choose which ones you're not going to work with. But in our case, we're just going to say all countries for now. Demo store, this really just puts a little symbol on your site so people understand that they're not actually going to fill out orders. And this is really only if you're going to use it with other people for testing. It will put up a little symbol up on the top there, a little message. Beta testing. This is really just for those who want to try out the very bleeding edge versions of JigoShop. Most of you aren't going to need to get into this, so we won't worry about it now. This is checking for beta updates, which again, you don't need to worry about. Invoicing, this is useful for putting all of your information and especially tax registration numbers. Very often you have to have that. And here you would fill in your name, you know, let's say it's Dish Belief here. 
and we'll put in a tax registration number. And you could actually tell it in here because the people need to know what it is. For me, it's HST, and that's my number, let's say. Let's put our address in there. If you have a second line of address, you put it in here. If you don't have anything in the first one, the second one won't work. Company phone number, let's put something in there. And then our email address, I'm just going to put in George. Now this is a very different one. You could put in here, let's say, customer service at mystore.com. Okay, and that can be different from the email that is actually in your administration, as we'll see later on here. Invoicing, really what that just means is the emails that go out for order confirmations and so forth. So those will appear at the top. Permalinks, now, if you're using an SEO plugin, don't touch these because you'll control all of that from your SEO plugin, assuming your plugin does these things, which it should. If you're not using an SEO plugin or your theme doesn't have SEO, then you could use these and it determines what your links are going to look like, your pretty permalinks. And the shorter, the better, keeping them descriptive, but not too long. So you don't have to have the word shop, say, and then the product name. You just need the product name. But anyway, we won't go into detail here because I personally think you should be using an SEO plugin. But anyway, if you're not, this is where you can do some of this. All right, so let's save these basic shop settings. And then we're going to deal with more settings in other videos as well as getting into the actual implementation of the plugin.